So just a bit on um, femoral acetabular impingement, then I'll turn it over to uh, Rachel. So in the radiographic evaluation of FAI, which of the following views is taken with a standing radiograph with a 65-degree angle? And that's the false profile. That allows us to look at the anterior acetabulum. So here's another, another person with hip pain, and you can see these x-rays right here, and perhaps the hip socket is slightly deep uh, on this side. So this is femoral acetabular impingement. When it occurs on the acetabular side, it's called pinching. So FAI is a common cause of early hip dysfunction and secondary osteoarthritis. That and dysplasia are the two. You have different types. There's the CAM mechanism, which is a femoral head problem where there's no offset, so when you flex the hip, it creates an injury to the labrum and the cartilage. And you have the pincer type, which is a very deep hip that when you flex the hip, basically the hip impinges here and you cause damage to the lateral acetabulum uh, just by constant uh, flexing. On this problem, as this hip flexes, it starts to shear the cartilage. But in most cases, it's combined. The symptoms are anterior groin pain, worse with flexion activities. And on exam, this is the impingement test, which also means hip pain. You can have an impingement test that's positive in a lot of things. But if you have limitation in hip flexion, limitation in internal rotation and pain, that is the impingement test. And that's uh, flexion, adduction, and internal rotation elicits pain. This is the false profile x-ray, which is 65 degrees to this is where they take the x-ray, and that looks at the anterior aspect of the acetabulum. Characteristic findings on imaging is an aspherical femoral head. This is FAI at its end stage. This is when it's already osteoarthritis. Or you can look at the acetabulum, and here's the anterior aspect of the acetabulum in red, and the posterior aspect of the acetabulum in blue, and you'd say this is a crossover sign. And this is a sign of acetabular retroversion, and in a deep hip, especially a deep hip uh, with retroversion, that can cause anterior impingement. You can also look at femoral head sphericity. You draw a circle around the femoral head, an angle down the shaft of the femur, and then where the bone leaves the circle, that's called the alpha angle. So alpha angles greater than 60 are suggestive of uh, hip dysplasia or uh, impingement. Or the other finding is a lack of offset between the anterior femoral head and the, um, and the femoral neck. We use MRI to look for labral pathology, which you can see right here, separated labrum, and here's a typical aspherical femoral head. Non-operative treatment is first, which is observation, physical therapy, uh, as well as an injection. And then the other treatment options would be arthroscopic hip surgery, and recent literature supports the hip of arthroscopy as well as open hip surgery. You can also do open hip surgery, which is a gold standard for measurement of FAI, but it also allows us to look at the hip um, for other diseases as well. The PAO, just briefly, this is a skeletally mature hip where you make a certain amount of cuts protecting uh, around the acetabulum, supraacetabular, posterior column, and uh, ischium, as well as a pubic bone. Um, and so you do that for dysplasia, or if there's too much arthritis, you'd consider a hip arthroplasty. Again, the goal of the PAO is to balance the malar oriented horseshoe shape acetabular cartilage over the femoral head. And this is what you do, and the goals of it, the good things, fragment mobility, you can correct version and subtle abnormalities. It remains extra articular, it maintains the abductors. So it's done in symptomatic patients with lateral C angles or anterior C angles less than 25 or other criteria based on CT and MRI. Arthroscopic hip surgery is performed more and more where its, its indications are for those with femoral head and neck cam impingement and when you can do acetabular uh, labral debridement or repair. In general, that's the same for open hip surgery. The complications of FAI surgery are over debridement, which is femoral neck fracture. If you do more than 30% uh, osteoplasty, it can lead to a femoral neck fracture. So 30% is a number to remember. So the zona of picularis is the arthroscopic landmark for which of the structures, and that's the iliopsoas tendon. Again, indications for hip arthroscopy are mostly FAI, femoral acetabular impingement. 
I'm going to skip through this uh, for uh, time, um, but some of the risks to think about are uh, with traction, uh, having perineal nerve temporary palsy. That's commonly uh, asked. So pudendal nerve palsy is the most common neurovascular complication uh, or neuropraxis or compression injury um, from hip arthroscopy. Fortunately, it uh, resolves in the majority of cases. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.